Hello everyone, Arun Van Gopal of WNYC here. It's my pleasure to introduce the Center for Traditional Music and Dances series, Beat of the Burroughs, NYC Online. This online series features over 50 of New York's leading traditional instrumentalists, dancers, singers, poets, and more. From Mongolia to Haiti, Colombia to the Gambia, among many others, they remind us how the strength of our country lies in its embrace of diversity and immigration. We want to celebrate these remarkable members of the New York community in these challenging times. So please enjoy these 50 programs, share them with your friends, and spread the word. Enjoy the show. <laughs> En el principio el Espíritu de Dios se movía sobre las aguas. En el principio el Espíritu de Dios se movía sobre las aguas. Pero ahora se está moviendo dentro de mi corazón. Pero ahora se moviendo dentro de mi corazón Hello everyone, my name is Harold Rodriguez. I am a native Brooklynite from descendants Colombian roots. My family was all born in Colombia. I was born here in Brooklyn. As you can see this backdrop, I'm privileged to uh, present it to you. It's Zion Presbyterian Church. I've been fortunate enough to work here for 15 years now as a music director, as a pianist and a vocalist. The reward it has brought me, or has brought me is unfathomable at this point. The, um, the blessing it has been as a musician to work here as a stable place to come and worship and provide music for the community. Uh, it's, it's hard to describe at times. What is the community, Harold? The community is, uh, it's you and I. It's you and I working hand in hand. It's, it's not only the church, it's not only the school, it's not only organizations that look out for the elderly or for the youth, it's everyone collectively. Ethnically? Ethnically, all, all races, all cultures trying to live in harmony. At times it may not be so easy, but it's an ideal that we aspire to and that I believe that we achieve on a daily basis. What music do you play on? I play Vallenato. Vallenato is music from the coast of Colombia, the Atlantic coast particularly. And uh, the music is composed of four different airs. We have Paseo, which is, uh, I'll give you an example really quick of Paseo. Let's be very thorough with it, right? <laughs> Paseo, you can hear the timing is in 4 4. If you're a musician, you can relate to that very easily. It's uh, Paseo means a uh, viaje, it's like a vacation, you're sort of relaxed. It's very, at times it could be very uh, upbeat as well, but uh, the point of it is to be relaxed, to enjoy it. We also have merengue, which is a little more complicated to the ear. If you're not a musician, uh, it's in the different timing. It's in uh, six six timing or three four. And I'll give you a little example of how it carries on as a rhythm. Here we go. Y yo tengo una herida muy honda que me duele. Y yo tengo una herida muy honda que me mata. Un hombre así mejor se muere. Hay para ver si a fin descansa. Un hombre así mejor se muere. Hay para ver si a fin descansa. So that would be a merengue. We have other music. Uh, the other air, sorry, the other air would be a son, 
which is that you can, you can kind of relate it, you can kind of relate it to a, a reggae feel. It's a very pulled back rhythm, and uh, it's so and so. Predominantly, or what actually drives it would be the bass, that you would hear it like this. Como Dios en la tierra no tiene amigos, como no tiene amigos, anda en el aire. Tanto le pido y le pido a hombre, siempre me manda mi males. That would be a son. And lastly, but not least, is la puya. Puya is probably the biggest challenge to, for an accordion player, and it's probably the one you're judged most on in the Festival Vallenato. Just so you know, the Festival Vallenato is a big competition to have different variations of it throughout Colombia, but mainly it's focused in Valle du Par, which is where Valle, uh, Vallenato is from. There's a big dispute if it came from Barranquilla, you know, Pride takes over at one point, but we all know it's from the Atlantic coast of Colombia. It's folk music. It's uh, Colombian art. And uh, this is, would be uh, the same rhythm as merengue, but this is a little more virtuoso, more highly skilled, and uh, much more involved in terms of uh, musicianship. So this is the one they're judged on. Um, enjoy. This is called El Mi Pedazo de Acordeón, which means my piece of accordion. when I was 14, I can vividly remember being in my room and I watched a soap opera, a novela, what we call it in Spanish, of uh, Escalona, composer, Rafael Escalona. It's a very, very prominent composer in Vallenato, so very well known in Colombia. Um, I remember watching this novela in particular, and it had an, a very famous artist, a very popular and successful one, Carlos Vives and his right-hand man, which is Egidio Cuadrado, who inspired me much more than I ever thought would inspire me when I first heard him. I'll be honest, when I first heard it, I wasn't too attracted to the sound because I wasn't introduced to folk music in any sense, in any context, especially in Colombian. I didn't even know what ex the, anything like that existed. So I got a a raw course of what it is in Vallenato, and not only in the sense of musically, but in its context. So while I watched the novela, I watched the soap opera, I saw how they would use that as kind of a noticiero, like a news, an update. Either what was a romantic interest from one person to another, or it would be talking about changes or the climate in a town, even the the food, as, as how far deep it goes, because it's a... Uh, it's a very folk-oriented uh, music and message at the same time. Nowadays, you can find it being a little more general, more widespread with the topics. But back then, in terms of the era where uh, Rafael Escalona was composing, that's what I was introduced to. So I remember that very, very vividly. And I also remember my dad's interest and his enthusiasm when he saw I became interested in learning more about the accordion. My dad being a, a musician, a guitarist, a singer, he instructed us since the day, since day one to, uh, you know, to sing, to express ourselves, to be creative. So we grew up in the church like that and eventually it made its way to what I'm telling you now in the Vallenato. So I remember this very, very much so. The following Christmas, my dad gifted me with an accordion, a Horner accordion. I'll never forget that day. 
It was not this accordion. It was not a corona, nor did it have three rows. It had two rows, and it was a little tango accordion. So it was a little tough to, uh, I guess, inspire myself or aspire to sound like a hedio, my newfound role model, with a different accordion. But it did teach me, uh, I guess, one quick lesson. <laughs> you learn to deal with what you have. You adapt. And in music, you should have that same mentality. You deal with what you have, and uh, you make the most of it. It's not so much the quality every time or how expensive an instrument could be, but the passion, the creativity, and the genuineness you can put behind that music. So you can reach someone, I've realized that, with an accordion, with a ukulele, you can reach anyone as long as it's well thought out and uh, it's well intended. So this is my instrument of choice. What's interesting about this accordion, which has been adapted to Vallenato, it's actually the Horner accordion stems from uh, Germany. So it's interesting because as, uh, as opposed to other accordions, we have uh, chromatic accordions, we have piano accordions. This one is diatonic. So if you will, if you're not well versed in the accordion, well, I'm gonna break it down for you as simple as it gets. Over here, you have reeds and it's composed of three, big harmonicas. You ever seen harmonica? Then you sing the inside of a, of accordion as well. So that's where it differs. It's, uh, if you're familiar with music, diatonic is just going up to scale, right? So it's, it's a challenge at the same time because you don't have the ability to go in and out with the same note. Every note varies, just like a harmonica. So let me give you an example. <laughs> Even more in layman's terms, as I would teach a suit, it was in, out, in, out, in, out, out, in. There you go. There's your first diatonic scale and your first accordion lesson. Bayonato, for me, is a very unique genre. Aside from being very personal and very deep-rooted in my, my upbringing and in my family's culture, it's also uh, music that has inspired me in many ways. And I would say, the first time I heard the accordion, I heard it as something very sentimental. It can go either way. It can be very joyous. It could be very nostalgic. That's what I like about it. It's, uh, it covers all the emotions. It's very inviting. It's very open. So I, my experience of playing Bayanato is when I play someone from a different culture. It doesn't even have to be Hispanic culture can appreciate it for what it's worth, for its vibrancy, for its richness, for how festive it is, for how colorful it is. It's uh, spiritual, we can even say. It touches spirits, it makes you dance. I've seen people smile over it. I see people hug each other, dance in groups collectively, not even knowing what I'm singing about, but just the music itself, Vallenato, it brings something, it provokes something out of you. And uh, so, as much as I could say I'm tied down to it because I'm Colombian, it's more than that. It's music. It's communal. So that's what I, I like about Vallenato. Aside from um, the fact that it gives you an excuse to party. I mean, who doesn't like to party? It also gives you an excuse to represent your culture in a positive way. And to, uh, I guess, open doors for other cultures. Because we have other music that's very relatable. We have like Dominican, Perico Ripiao, we have what you call Tipico, we have music from Mexico, we have music from Poland. I have many people who have come up to me because they're Polish and they relate to the music. Maybe not so much the Vallenato, but the Vallenato brings something out of it where they can relate to it, even from other cultures. So it's cross-cultural, I guess you could say. It's even intergenerational. I have experience of playing music for youth. They love to see the accordion. Just even the visual itself of Vallenato is pretty interesting. You see someone standing up there with a bunch of the percussion instruments, percu percussive, and uh, it could stand alone because of the, what it entails in accordion. You have the bass, so it covers your basses, no pun intended, and it covers your melody here. So let's say if I'm just playing In context, it's a dance. It's a musical dance. So I believe that by this musical dance, it invites you to dance. 
It's something that we can all relate to. It's humanistic in that sense. So music, Bayanato music, is very, very dear to me, not only for personal reasons, but because I see how it can affect people outside of my circle. When I first started playing Bayanato and Cumbia, playing uh, folk music, Colombian folk music, I will admit I was much more attracted to, to the music itself. I didn't have much of an understanding of how far back the tradition of Vallenato Colombian culture actually stemmed from. I was very ignorant to that. So perhaps I played a part throughout the years where I would um, kind of veer away from Vallenato. I didn't have the appreciation that I believe you probably need to really immerse yourself into that music, to appreciate it, and to, uh, I guess, be an ambassador of that music, to preserve, and not only preserve, to promote it. So, Bayanato, when I eventually, eventually did become uh, much more appreciative, I, I had the chance to go to Colombia many, many times, and uh, I will be very honest about it, because I had this reluctancy to go to Colombia the first time. I had never, ever gone to Colombia. And um, I got cold feet right before I went to the airport. I said, maybe I'm better off not going. So listen to this. You what? Were, you were born in New York, right? Yes, Brooklyn. Brooklyn, New York. Not too far from here in Maimonides Hospital. How, it's funny how life comes full circle at times. So I'm going to tell you this really quick story. It's very, very short. What convinced me to go to Colombia? I had very cold feet. It wasn't that I had a love there. It wasn't that I had family members there waiting for me and missing me. It wasn't that I'm Colombian in my blood, in my culture, it's all in me. What was it? It was a vallenato that I put on before I left to the airport. Dio me des dias. I put it on my headphones, I put on my headphones and I listened. I will not, I will never forget the moment that I heard that vallenato and it let me know exactly why I was going to Colombia. Why? Because I'm Colombian. <laughs> and I should get to know my roots. Even more, it would really help me out to understand where this music that I'm playing all over the city comes from, what it's about, what it brings. Esos ojazos me enloquecieron De tal manera con su mirar Que ya no puedo vivir sin ellos Y eso me obliga para cantar donde so for as much as tradition has uh, set the ground and the basis for my understanding of Vallenato, it has also served immensely in opening up avenues of creativity musically for me. Uh, it lets me delve into other genres. It also has allowed me, being a citizen of, of Brooklyn, living here, a resident, it has allowed me to not only preserve Vallenato, but expand on it to my liking. The ability to find a diverse range of musicians who play an eclectic amount of genres, not exclusively Vallenato, has helped me out greatly to expand my sound, to uh, create a, a unique sound of Vallenato. Uh, not abandoning it, but incorporating it into everything I do. Uh, for example, Praise and Worship, where we are here. So I, the reason I've been able to do that is because I have the ability in such an, let's say, liberal state or liberal country, musically speaking, where we have so many genres, it's a sancocho, a stew of, of, uh, of genres here, it's easier to expand on it where it's not so rigid in terms of down the line of tradition. You can incorporate tradition, you can embrace it, but at the same time, open it up, express it into other avenues and other ideas. So that's what I'm doing with the praise and worship. I've incorporated coritos, and hymns, contemporary praise into something much more easy to carry around, let's say, to put it lightly. When the pandemic hit as a musician, I wasn't so sure how that would play out. It was very, uh, frustrating to see how it would unfold in terms of stability, of being where I would be playing, in terms of public, uh, even in, inside all these different places that uh, are no longer accepting customers. So I saw that as a very big obstacle in this time, in this period. 
Fortunately enough for me, I saw opportunities I, I can take advantage of throughout the pandemic, uh, mostly virtual ones. So I put my thinking cap on and got to work. Fortunately enough, I was at that moment, I was working for a senior center. So I was able to experiment by Anato, the practicality of this accordion via Zoom for all the seniors. It was a very uh, monumental experience because it allowed me to see how I can reach the community, even virtually, with Vallenato and Colombian folk music. Who would have thought, right? But it was being done. So I met another challenge with Vallenato in the pandemic. Because we're doing virtual and I'm playing Vallenato, typically it's all in Spanish. So how would I be able to reach other people, not only through the music, but through the message as well? I mean, music is just as much the message as it is, is uh, the melody at times. If not even more important, I would say. Sometimes it supersedes that. So this is my challenge. I'm going to give you a quick, uh, this is my resolution to that. Fly me to the moon. Let me play among the stars. Let me know what spring is like in Jupiter or Mars. In other words, please be true. Oh, in other words, I love you. And just like that, you have Vallenato in English. And just like that, everyone knew what I was singing about. And just like that, we carried over Colombian folk to other cultures. Now they know what it is, and now they can appreciate it for what it is. So I have different examples. I've uh, started composing uh, vallenatos in English, or even translating them from Spanish to English. Which, uh, maybe I'll show you that in a moment. How uh, else have I been able to incorporate vallenato during the pandemic, or music itself? Well, this church, as you see it, as lovely as it is, the backdrop was closed for a while due to the pandemic. So I had to um, delve into the resources I have. And once again, there goes my accordion. So I would start doing praise and worship every Sunday with my accordion. I would do hymnos. I would do corietos like you heard me in the beginning. That's what I would do. Um, and that helped me as a musician not only find stability, but uh, find promise in music. Like, I'm, I hate to sound like a broken record, but for me, music is very communal. That's the idea. Uh, when I was younger, I saw it as a much more selfish thing, very ego-driven, very self-serving. Now I've come into the understanding and appreciation that it's not really so much about how I feel, but what I can project and make other people feel. So I believe that Vallenato does that precisely and effectively. During the pandemic, it's been very limited, as I, as I would say, as you would foresee something like that after uh, such an outbreak. Um, I would have to um, be a little more resourceful, improvise. So the gigs that I was offered for the uh, talking in a serious matter, I have played uh, various funerals, but I'm going to um, focus in on one because it has to do everything with Vallenato and music and uh, uplifting music, spiritual music, to my greatest passions in music, you can say. So I was invited to a funeral and uh, someone asked me if I can play Vallenato because their dad really loved Vallenato. So once I heard that, I was all for it, but I was very skeptical as how everyone in the funeral home would react to something like that because typically it's something very um, festive. Or it could be the opposite, very nostalgic. Either one, you don't want to kind of bring into to the table at a funeral. You want to be a little more neutral or at least considerate of what the person wanted or their family. So the other part side of the family says, we accept the Vallenato, but we're a Christian-centered uh, family and we would like more spirituals. So literally I said, guys, let's put our hands together and let's play some spiritual Vallenatos, which is what went down. I will tell you it's one of the most memorable funerals I've ever been to. Not because it was Vallenato and not because it was spiritual, but because of the, 
the understanding that it brought together. Typically, so. you, you think of uh, party music, and as a Colombian, you think of Vallenato right off the bat, and cumbia. So at a, at a funeral, it might seem inappropriate at first thought, first glance, but after talking with the, the family, I saw that it was something that they would actually really appreciate, and it's something that would be true to their culture, to their tradition. It's something that would, uh, in so many words, come full circle for that person, where they were born, and even being in another country, we can still bring a piece of that life to them. I, I was very skeptical how it would play out, standing in front of everyone playing a vallenato. Once you hear the accordion, you know, your impression is, wow, it's a very lively instrument, a very loud instrument. Is this the place for it? It turns out it was exactly the place for it. I've, so many people came up to me afterwards saying how much they appreciated, not only the fact that it was spiritual, but that it was vallenato. We were keeping it true to the tradition. That's what he wanted, so that's what he got. And I'm very happy. Vallenato is very interesting in the sense that for as much as it's folklore, it's also uh, music that talks about today's times. I've been able to use Vallenato in a very um, positive way uh, for the community. Being that Vallenato is a very sentimental genre, it explores the emotions of the individual, at times of even the, the pueblo, you would say, the town, the country, the state. It's like uh, a personal journal, a public one, an open one, that um, if even exploits or exposes your present day emotions. So what I like about Vallenato is that, like the example I gave before I left to the airport, it speaks to you at the moment. You can apply that message to today. It's very humanistic, like I said. You can relate to it on all levels, on a very superficial level, but you can v relate to it on a very deep level in terms of emotions. So that's what I like about that. And also, Vallenato leaves room for improvisation, what you call a trovador, an improviser. In, in, in American culture, you would say a battle rapper, someone who freestyles in the moment. So due to that, it opens up in, in a possibility of speaking of the moment, of speaking of your emotions, of being able to not only uh, express your emotions, but also speak about something that's happening in the moment so you can relate to other people or other people can relate to you. So it's a beautiful art. It's in, it's in the moment. And that's what I really like about Ryan Alto, just as much as for everything else that I've mentioned, it opens up a lot more being able to improvise within a genre. So I'm gonna give you two examples of um, the relationship I have with Vallenato, how I've been able to uh, use it with my own um, style and how I've been able to uh, preserve the tradition all at once. So it's a kind of a, a mix. The first one will be the first song I've ever heard in my life, Vallenato, which is called La Gota Fria, which is the cold uh, drop of water. It's by Emiliano Zuleta. And it's interesting because uh, the song talks about this rivalry between accordions, which you will come to know if you delve more into Vallenato history. There's a very big competition within that uh, within that genre. There's a very big tension at times of who's better accordion, who's a better singer, but it's for the better, I would like to believe. It pushes people to not only play better, but express themselves. Um, so this is called La Gota Fria, and it has to do with uh, the rivalry and the surprise reaction of one musician from the other when he heard the other musician play at a level that he did not expect. That's why I said, le cayo la gota fria. It's like a cold shower. It's like, boom, a rude awakening. So this is la gota fria. I'm just going to play a little snippet of it. But this is the first one that I, uh, I came to know. And I still play it to this day. And it's actually one of my hits <laughs> when I'm outside. Uh, everyone, if you're Colombian, you will know this song. It's without a doubt. So enjoy. Here we go. Acordate moralito de aquel día que tuviste un remite, no que si se separana. Te fuiste de mañanita, sería de la misma rabia. Mora 
Morales, Morales se creía, ay que la mí, que la mí iba a ganar. Y cuando me oyó tocar, le cayó la gota fría. So that was La Gota Fria. That's almost like a national anthem at this point. Uh, it's, it's a song that's very recognizable. It was brought even more into light internationally by Carlos Vives, uh, the one who was actually the protagonist in the novela that inspired me, the soap opera, which is Escalona. So I hope you enjoyed that. I have one more example, though, of how I've been able to assimilate into these times and that's actually by incorporating Vallenato with a little English. I know I sang a little uh, Frank Sinatra for you, so now I'm going to show you how I incorporate actual Spanish lyrics, the, the lyrics from the actual song, which is called El Mejoral, which is sent for the cure. It could be translated to like a little Advil, some kind of cure. But this cure is uncurable, as the song says, because it has to do with love. So you have to just let time take its course. So what I, like, what I wanted to do is kind of let people who were outside of this Colombian circle appreciate it for what it is. So I did a translation, and I'm going to show you really quick what I work with. First, I'm going to sing it in English, and then I'm going to sing it in Spanish to give it context. Here we go. Enjoy. I thought I could find a cure that would relieve me of this tragic pain. Thought I could find a cure that would relieve me of this tragic pain. Oh, but how can I be cured if love is the cause of pain? Oh, but how can I be cured if love is the cause of pain? Yo pensé que un mejorar, mira curarme ese gran dolor. Yo pensé que un mejorar, mira curarme ese gran dolor. Pero que me va a curar si es una pena de amor. First and foremost, I want to give my heartfelt thanks for all this to uh, the man behind the camera, the producer, and my great friend, Jorge Arevalo Mateos. Thank you very much for this opportunity to share my experience. I want to give a special thanks to the Center for Traditional Music and Dance by way of uh, Beat of the Burrows this series that they're putting together. It's a privilege and honor that I'm being considered and it's also a privilege to share my music with you, my experience, my appreciation, and my understanding of it so far. I want to give a special thanks to my family, the ones who've been supportive, to all the people who've come across my way giving me, I guess, uh, encouragement, support, unconditional support at times. I want to give thanks to everyone for that. I want to give thanks to everyone who has been open to me providing music into their lives. It's something I don't take for granted ever. And I want to stress something before I go. I want to stress the importance of music in my life, how I see it, how it works in the community. Um, every day, I want to uh, urge musicians like myself to reach out to other people, see how music goes beyond just yourself, just your capacity. There's other people who uh, will definitely appreciate your music. I'm so glad that we live in a place where Colombian folk music is received, received the way it is. I can, uh, I can go to Colombia and play my accordion and it's appreciated, but in contrast to being here, a Colombian American, the joy that people receive, not only people who've come over from Colombia, but from any other part of the world. The joy, the peace, the, how jubilant they seem when they, when they hear me play the accordion. It's much appreciated. So uh, I would like to uh, emphasize that, be emphatic about it, the communal aspect of music. If there's anything you can take away from my talk here, be involved, be a blessing to others. Make music about everyone. Don't make it about yourself. 